Hey guys, AP1. Um, miss you guys. Hope you're all doing well. Um, I'm taking advantage of my good internet while I have it right now. <laughs> um, so you'll probably see me look down a few times during the course of this video just because I've got to check my book and my notes. Um, like I said, I'm kind of doing this on the fly, taking advantage of my internet connection while I have it. So this is your AP1 video for brain and nervous system. All right, so you guys are going to read through labs 10 and um, 11. That starts on page 66, um, and it goes through page um, 68 for the nervous system. And then for the brain, that reading starts on page 70, and it goes through page <clears throat> 75, 75. Um, and there's quite a bit of labeling in this one too. So you're going to have labeling on page 68. Um, on page 68 where it's asking you to draw the neuron. Remember you drew that back in the tissue lab so you can refer back to that drawing. Or you can refer to the picture of the neuron that is in your lab book on the bottom of page 66 and just draw from there. Either one is fine. Um, but you have labeling on 68 and um, some questions on 68. And then on page 69, more labeling and questions. Then again on page 78, you have um, labeling for the brain. Now on the brain dissection that's on page um, 76 and 77, um, I have talked to Dr. Nelson. We're gonna try to get together um, to do these last couple dissections for you guys in AP1. So it will be the brain and then um, the eyeball. Um, so we have plans to get those done and video them so that you guys can see them. Um, on page 77, where it wants you to label the dissected brain, um, I will do my best to upload you some notes that will help you with that. Um, do the best that you can. If you have any problems, reach out to me and I will be more than happy to help you in any way that I can. Okay? So, now you know your instructions and what you're supposed to do. Let's start your lab lecture for brain and nervous. Alright? <clears throat> and I will be uploading copies of my notes for you guys um, a little bit later on today. Hopefully. Fingers crossed. Um, but as soon as possible. All right, so in the nervous system, we have um, two primary types of cells. You have neurons, uh, which are the primary cell of the nervous system, and you have neural glial cells, which are the supporting cells of the nervous system. Um, neurons outnumber neural glial cells 10 to 1, okay? And you have different types of neural glial cells, and they're all listed for you in the notes right here. <clears throat> They're also all listed for you in bold print in your lab book on page 66 in that paragraph that's titled Cells of the Nervous System. Crazy. Um, but just a quick um, overview of them. Your, cell, your, your neuroglial cells, um, you have astrocytes. Astrocytes form the blood-brain blood -brain barrier. Say that five times fast. Um, Oglion dendrocytes, I don't name these folks, I just report the facts. Um, Oglion dendrocytes form the myelin sheath in the central nervous system. Schwann cells form the myelin sheath in the peripheral nervous system. Um, epind ependymal cells um, line the brain and they produce cerebrospinal fluid. Uh, microglial cells are the phagocytes of the nervous system. And then satellite cells are not found in the central nervous system. They surround and protect neurons and other cells. Okay. Um, the nervous system is divided into two main parts. You have the central nervous system, which is the brain and the spinal cord. And then the peripheral nervous system, which is all of the nerves that come off of the spinal cord and traverse throughout the body. Okay? And the nervous system sends two types of signals. You have afferent signals, um, 
which are signals that come from the body and travel to the brain. And then you have efferent signals, and those are signals that go from the brain out to the body. Okay, so afferent, efferent. Um, we have three main, um, I don't want to get into the brain yet. That's, I'll get there in a second. Sorry, getting ahead of myself. Um, <clears throat> let's talk about how neurons communicate, okay, uh, before I jump into the parts of the brain. Um, so, in the neuron, this is its basic setup, right? So you have the cell body with its nucleus, and then um, this nice big tail here. And on this tail, you have, um, this is a myelinated neuron. So each of these little bubbles here is um, a Schwann cell, which is producing the myelin sheath. And then down here, you have the axon terminals, okay? So this end of the neuron is the end that receives the communication, either from the brain or from the body. And this end of the neuron, the axon end, is the end that sends the signal. So a signal comes in through here, travels through the neuron, goes out through the axon terminals in a process called saltatory conduction. Okay? <clears throat> in a resting neuron, <clears throat> The fluid inside the cell, the intracellular fluid, is mainly potassium. And the fluid outside the cell, the extracellular fluid, is mainly sodium. Okay? And so, potassium carries a slight charge and sodium carries a slight charge. Um, so, all neurons are, sorry, move this out of the front of my mouth. All neurons have this slight charge to them, okay? And this slight charge is called their resting potential, all right? Now, when a stimulus is strong enough, it will cause the neuron to break what is called threshold. And if the neuron breaks threshold, it will fire and send the signal, okay? So if the neuron reaches threshold, it sends the signal. If the neuron does not reach threshold, it does not send the signal. The signal dies. Okay, so it's an all or nothing response. Either the stimulus is great enough to cause that resting neuron to reach threshold and send that signal, or it's not and nothing happens. Okay, um, so again, an all or nothing response. But in this process of saltatory conduction, what happens is you've got this resting neuron, right? And you've got the intracellular fluid, primarily um, potassium, and the extracellular fluid, primarily sodium. Okay, so in saltatory conduction, that sodium rushes in to the cell through these spaces in between the swan cells, in between these little gaps in the myelin sheath called nodes of Ranvier. Okay, the sodium rushes in at these nodes of Ranvier and that builds up the charge so that it finally builds it up enough that it's enough to cross threshold and then boom, that neuron fires and the signal gets sent. So hopefully that was as clear as mud. Um, but as you're reading through it, if you kind of keep that in mind, and again, it'll be outlined in your notes, um, hopefully it'll make a little bit more sense uh, once you read it in the lab book and then you read it and your PowerPoint notes from Dr. Nelson and you hear it again from Dr. Nelson, hopefully it'll kind of click for you guys. If not, um, holler at me, I'll be glad to try and explain it a little better um, but that's the basic gist of it okay um, so now on to the brain We've got three main parts of the brain the largest most obvious part of the brain is the cerebrum okay um, this is the area where our conscious thought takes place okay and then we have the smaller area of the brain that sits um, just inferior to the cerebrum so it sits right below the cerebrum, or cerebrum, um, and it's kind of this little ball-shaped area. Um, it is the cerebellum. The cerebellum is responsible for complex body movements. Um, so fine motor skills, gross motor skills, things like that. Um, and then the last part of the brain is the brain stem that comes off of the um, comes off of the brain and eventually travels down to become the spinal cord. But before it becomes the spinal cord, we have this small area that's the brain stem. And the brain stem is responsible for um, 
all those complex body functions that are involuntary that we don't have to think about. Praise the Lord. Um, so, I'm trying to make sure that I'm covering everything for you guys because I feel like I'm leaving something out. I'm not sure what it is. Um, although I'm sure if Nelson watches this video, he'll let me know. <laughs> um, we covered the cerebellum, the cerebrum, the brain stem. I think that's it for you guys for this one. Um, if you're going through there and there's anything that I have left out or anything that you're confused on or whatever, then be sure and let me know so that I can go through it with you. Um, I'm available to FaceTime chat with you or um, shoot me a text message, uh, shoot me an email, whatever you need to do. Okay. Um, so make sure that you get that labeling done and all those questions done and that you're sending pictures of your completed labeling and questions to both me and Dr. Nelson. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Stay safe. Bye-bye.